So today's um, agenda is I'll go through um, the research, uh, I think, largely by um, uh, the students and um, tell you some, you know, brief idea of what was the core innovations. I may not discuss everyone in detail because they may not be uh, very relevant to this particular focus, uh, the focus of this class. So Vipul Kashyap was my first PhD student. And um, what we can do also, I think it's important for you to keep in a good perspective so you can see what is Vipul up to. So we, this was the time when I was uh, still in industry. And uh, Vipul uh, essentially uh, came as an intern to work on the info harness project. We discussed info harness project uh, a little bit in the last class, right? So it was first uh, browser based uh, facility search engine. Uh, and um, the other thing is that it was doing a wrapping of any type of object in the web. So it could be also a information service. It doesn't have to be a CTP server, but it can be an information service which is uh, accessible. It could be a news service, and then you could, uh, you know, um, access uh, and search and use item. And uh, the idea is that whatever we fetch, we would associate with it a metadata object. And the metadata would have some attributes, properties, right? So those are also called facets, facet, properties, um, attributes, uh, you know, all these are various terms people use, right? Features. They all are related things, right? Uh, different communities use, have used different things over the period of time. Now, um, the probably the most, uh, you know, and then we pull, uh, uh, you know, his thesis we converted into a book also called uh, Semantic Information Brokering. Now, the most, uh, so let's see, this is we pull web page. So, he is in clinical informatics. He calls himself knowledge hacker trying to synthesize validated and generated domain knowledge for healthcare. You can see, you know, the knowledge uh, team way early uh, with what people uh, did. Uh, and, uh, okay, so, uh, and, uh, you know, let's see. Let me do this thing, I think this. Why is this so slow? Internet is not working properly. It's slow from the model. It's slow. Okay, so um, we pull, um, see, he was a co author on this so far, schematically, you're so near. So, did anybody look up this paper or the other paper on object similarity and look at the definition of semantic proximity? So, you know, really, so you guys are research students, this is what is expected. So, when you discuss something, you really need to go back. So. For every uh, one hour spent here, you need to spend two hours, uh, uh, you know, so about three hours of, uh, you know, uh, yourself to pick up the things that we have. I mean, there's just not enough time, but you really need to pick that up. So I really expected at least a couple of you to have say, yeah, I know what a semantic proximity is. I defined semantic proximity in last class, okay. You want to summarize that? Tell me, can you tell me what semantic proximity is? 
Deepa, do you want? No, but I, I define symmetric. So I define four elements of the symmetric. Do you remember that? So this is a very fundamental concept, right? Remember how related are two objects are one of the most important uh, problems in computing. That's the at the center of any integration of course. Right? So schema integration or you know, right? The degree of symmetric supply is equal to one steps. The, what are the four elements on which we define symmetric proximity? Well, and why was that? So that's where well, we let's suppose you know plan in my test question. What is what is symmetric proximity? Define it, and what was uh, unique about it? So there was a concept of symmetric distance when we uh, worked on it. You remember I mentioned uh, uh, Peter Feinhauser in the last class and uh, in the University of Darmstadt or uh, there's a Frank, uh, uh, Frank Hoffer Darmstadt. So, no, uh, you know, uh, people say you have an object and, uh, uh, and the degree of similarity would be a number 0.9 or 0.8. Which is not meaningful because you can't reproduce. So your point eight is not same, same as point eight for somebody else. So I said it needs to be more formally defined. And there was symmetric proximity. Did anybody care to open this paper? And the keyword, by the way, also is available online. How, how we learned, you know, when we went to class and follow up, and what's what's with this cohort again? Are you here just to attend the class and then? Did anybody look up this paper, which I say is very influential? Yeah. There was a, um, um, a LinkedIn post somebody recently made about relationships being very important. Then I responded and uh, I talked about uh, this and I talked about, huh? There was a yeah, the ER keynote that I gave on relationship web, right? And I also showed a web page I have on the relationships, right? So um, you see that these are important. Relationship at the heart of symmetry. In fact, in my response, uh, I also said, you know, started with the importance of relationship as, you know, in the uh, uh, whenever Bush is, uh, you know, thing about trailblazing, but, you know, that. It, it, in, the, in the fundamental intuition that I got very early on was that when you model anything in the world, the meaning comes from relationship. It doesn't come from nodes. So if you simply look at knowledge of anything as a sort of nodes and edges, the meanings are coming from the relationship. So there is a, an object, uh, you know, let's say, um, say you say object, Vikula. Uh, uh, you you Essentially, 
any object, if you have triple omega, and the meaning when you say something label that itself doesn't give you any meaning. When you say Vipula is a student uh, at AI Institute, or Vipula has an advisor, or Vipula is doing research in this area, that is what defines Vipula to all the properties that Vipula has, or that object Vipula has. The, but the node by itself don't, you know, it's just a label. When the, you know, person that Vipula is, becomes clear to by basically paying attention to all the relations we have and the value when you lift up it may be other object right that's very fundamental so what does it tell you is that in the keynote if you open the er uh keynote one of the slide is four stages the first is keywords keywords are going to then entities, some many. Then relationship. And then I had a fourth thing. I don't know what I call that. But you know, uh, it's you're not even there. So um, how do you model those relationships? Um, is it a um, unlabeled? Uh, you object A and B, you're connecting them in uh, uh, a, 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 a undirectional edge. Is it a directional edge? Is it a labeled direction edge? Or is it a probabilistic, uh, you know, uh, uh, representation? Or it has multiple properties on it. So anything we do in, um, you know, today, the, 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 when you start modeling the world, there can be different level of complexity. In most cases, we are doing simplification. In most cases, we are simply connecting the object and say, here is my model. In real world, there can be quite a few complexities that Suppose I'm behave, putting behavior of uh, this person, behavior at what? Behavior at home can be very different, right? Behavior in presence of person of the same ethnicity and culture, behavior in person of other ethnicity and culture may be very different. So that presence of, for example, all that lead to much more complex modeling than we typically apply. So as you think about, even today, as you think about um, your, your information extraction, as you think about your uh, machine learning, what are you paying attention to? You're only paying attention to keywords. You get to pay attention to your entities, you have to start having a knowledge graph or model that have, have those entities and they say, what I'm seeing here is that entity. When I'm seeing S as the standards and poor 500 index, that's just a text that has no meaning. When I say it is um, the same as in my world model, in my knowledge graph, that object, I have given it the core meaning, primary meaning, but that's not all. See, standard five towards 500 index is made up of these 500 stocks. And the 500 stocks that make up standard poor today may be different than 500 stocks that are, are, are a few days from here because that index is not fixed, right? It uh, completes fall, fall off and get into the index, right? So here is the syntax, standard five index. Here is an object, five index. And here is a full, full understanding of stands for, for finite index. How far you are? I mean, all you can deal with is muster the way to deal with the keyword and syntax. You're very far from the, you know, associating the meaning that there is actually, right? 
much of the power you need is you know you, you, you get much of the power you need by just simply understanding that that is index which is finite uh, you know stocks and it is used in this way in some application you do need to know what is the, what, what what are the finite uh, the uh, companies that constitute it today so it all depends on the application yes so in the, it's like what you are explaining is the work of science yeah uh, So suppose in the in the case of Tali, we had a knowledge gap, and we had um, you know there are actually more than one omit set in the world. So if you have model this omit set, you have that. But if you have model other omit set, there is a well known omit set in marketing, and uh, it could be that. So Tali would know that there are two of them, and try to distinguish based on the context that it understands. So if you, uh, you, you remember, I had shown Tali such facet such interface, then it would choose a domain. Mm -hmm. Domain could be music, sports, you know, business, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, or, 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 or technology. So perhaps I would be on the technology and uh, the other set uh, at um, uh, Georgia Tech uh, in marketing would belong to business, as an example. And this way, Tali would, uh, first of all, you know that there are two omissions, that they are in these two different contexts, and it will do the best to understand which omission you are talking about. Uh, the example I have used is kind of Moderna. Moderna as in uh, musician, Moderna as in artist, he was an actor in movie Avita, and Moderna as in religious of, you know, a person, right? Moderna from the Christianity. So um, uh, they are, Modernas and the system understood that and would uh, say which one you want, or say, Here are, are the results for Moderna, the artist, here are the results for Moderna, the, um, you know, uh, the musician, and such. Right? So it, it did that. And so if you saw the result of, uh, you know, Tali such results, the results will be segregated by those things, the context. Context would be artist versus a musician. So the system already supported facets, domains, context. Now, if you saw the semantic proximity, it has context, domain, and plus two more other, uh, you know, parameters, right? The four parameters, if you see the number. So, um, uh, so the first part here is that of modeling. How do you model that? Second is discovering. How do you discover? Meaning, essentially, how do you find uh, relationships uh, from from the data, right? And of course, in that language, convert it into uh, a representation, uh, structural representation, and then explore exploiting. Meaning, for example, semantic association is exploiting relationship. Semantic association, path, computing path, is exploiting relation. How are you indirectly connected to something else? That will be the application. Connecting the dot application to find the terrorists uh, through a bunch of connections with bad entities. Good discussion. And I believe really, for students in this class, we need more discussion, more questions from your side so that you know. So, okay. So, uh, uh, this knowledge we have, people used to call it sometimes mental lexicon. but I was very interested. I published a paper in 2010. I got this paper ever called Mental Lexicon for Indian Language, Icon, Indian Indian Energy Concept. But that's not a big thing. So I believe if I see back, you know, there was a bunch of people in NLP domain who have been creating word text. Okay? Very grammatically constructed lexicon. So then this data mining people actually come into picture. They said, hey, your word name is not usable for real life purpose because it cannot capture this kind of real world scenario. This is a car with a connection, and you don't have something. That's all. So people started creating, you know, mental lexicon, knowledge graph, different names if you call that. 
concept made or you know mind made microsoft to spend a lot of time on mind made and so on so i believe the major discussion and debate uh, what i remember that because i then you know shifted into something so relationship how many relationship we actually need concept that i in my opinion today has around 50000 you know relationship if we look at prop bank femnet has 5000 you know 10000 relationship and then people are doing a lot they never convert the number that they put this much relationship in one because maybe it's a real life problem so then people somehow got you know distracted you know <clears throat> how to you know map this to word net how to use this and so on so what's your you know you know pointers for this discussion I mean, how do you see this uh, so my this current problem? my current um, view is, is, is you know in, i always respected theory but i have always been a uh, you know practitioner or you know make the things actually happen so i much of the work you see have all been inspired by real world applications mm -hmm. you know uh, all, all the time i give them the example i give them example saying you know uh, this application the, the process knowledge i i, I got that from uh, you know basically thinking about clinical pathways or clinical protocols yeah. clinical guidelines i know that they exist i have been exposed to them before i said how do we, you know that should be part of uh, you know our knowledge infusion at this particular type of knowledge process knowledge and and again so clinical pathway is what got me there so here my current view is that um there isn't any um uh there isn't going to be ever a single unified knowledge base or knowledge graph or ontology or the world. This I talked about it way long ago. So uh, there were earlier people that were uh, trying to develop universal ontology. So I said, from my my, I was very clear that that's not never going to happen. That's not practical. Blah blah blah. What you see today is a very pragmatic view. And that comes from in the taxonomy I have provided. Lexical cons uh, considerations, linguistic considerations, power size considerations, uh, geographical and spatial considerations, um, uh, you know, world model or, or, or you know, factual world considerations, and then uh, domain specific considerations. So these are, and this is not a complete one, there can always be one more or two more, but in general, uh, my viewpoint is that if I want to understand language, I need to look at all these type of language, uh, uh, sorry, all, all these type of knowledge. Each knowledge represents a particular layer of abstraction. So uh, for me, uh, the abstraction layer, in this case, the abstraction layer, is a, it can be abstract in different abstraction, different contexts. Um, uh, in a deep neural network, you can call each layer as a level of abstraction if you want to. But from a semantic perspective, I will uh, make uh, each of these type of knowledge that I talk about as a layer of abstraction. And I would say that essentially uh, to fully understand the language in general, in a more common uh, application format, you need all of these. I can come up with one more very specialized application that I have one more type of our abstraction knowledge. Level that will be there. Okay. Uh, so I think there is that is answer. And, and the point is that at each level, there is just uh, just use the best that you have. And even at the common, uh, you know, let's say common sense level, this concept that is one of them. There's, there are others. So you know, find the best you have. Development of each of them have taken massive amount of human effort in almost all cases. What made us take a lot of effort? Concept that has taken a lot of effort. Wikipedia, from which I get this thing, has taken a lot of effort. Uh, GeoName has made, taken a lot of human effort. All community effort. Everybody, all community effort, all community effort. And I would say, viewer is this. So there is nothing that a statistical learning, deep learning algorithm can do that can rival an option which utilizes this community. There's nothing they can do. That's my, you know, uh, belief that I've held for a long time. That's why, from the early days of deep learning, I said this would be only partial solution. And I've been talking about just like Marcus is talking about. I've been talking about, you know, for the same time. I'm just not writing as much as you. 
just want to add a little bit of historical perspective on the scope of uh, general oncology in its particular relation. So I think we sort of started out, at least in cognitive science, technology is a relation and part whole relation, autonomy. And then, um, you know, then there was sort of this explosion into like anything goes. Yes. Uh, and but part of that uh, time frame also um, <clears throat> resulted in a contribution from Roger Shank, which has not been followed through on, except sort of in spirit. Years also, right? Pardon me? Years and others also. Yeah. So so you know, Shank's contribution was this this notion of sort of conceptual primitive that we could use to to kind of organize relationships, which really map onto the verbs. And then I think the best um, uh, subsequent research in that regard is in linguistics, which would be Beth Levin's work on um, sort of categories of verbs. And what she does there, and I don't remember all the categories, um, but, but there are things like, you know, verbs of transfer, verbs of possession, verbs of movement, and that's very much related to Roger Shanks stuff. And then for each new entry, because it's possible to have new verbs, they're not closed class, um, you situate those inside those basic categories. So at least there has been some effort in linguistics to provide some structure on the nature of, of verbs. So, some addition, maybe it's, it's not an answer, but some addition. So I worked for three years for a machine translation project in India. I live here. Ten institutions were start, and we have built word net for Indian languages and so on. So we did a lot of discussion on this, how to create word net, what is the linguistic feature, how the sense has been drawn, what are the hyperneme, what is the homonym, and so on. And I do just this is a fun fact. We used to you know decide in the whole day meeting that this is a structure. And there was a Marathi, you know, you probably know the word. There was a Marathi linguist was there, and she used to come and say. Now I have a word, Karas Mocha, you know, the in front of house. And see, it does not follow your list. <laughs> <laughs> and there, you know, two days workshop gone, you know, nothing. Okay. Now again, you know, the design the rule, etc. So okay. So so I have as but this is time. where the why the rule based NLPS yes, exactly. uh, you know, linguistic uh, approach right. to NLP has failed. Right. Or it was it was a you know uh, there was a company hmm. uh, uh you know in the one the best known uh, organization is um uh, the one at uh, uh, John Hopkins University, uh, you know, they have, you know, very well known, you know, group on ling linguistics. And, um, uh, you know, there'll be hundreds of programmers, there are companies who did, you know, hundreds of programs in, 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 in uh, hundreds of content managers in uh, uh, India and, and, and Eastern Europe, they would just hand code the knowledge, yes. rules for linguistic, you know, thing. And this is the time when um, I co-founded the EZDI, uh, you know, uh, where EZDI, uh, we said, you will think that knowledge graph based approach, uh, uh, not the uh, uh, ones. Uh, so our competition was, uh, there's a company called something, some artificial intelligence, something, and they had uh, this approach of getting the, you know, clinical knowledge uh, encoded through these rules. And of course, I knew that we can't keep up with it. And we de designed this uh, knowledge graph in a much more scalable way. And uh, that is the pattern that I have uh, with uh, uh, Shans, uh, my student is, uh, uh, you know, one who uh, taught the guys at EZDI, how do we build knowledge graph? Um, and uh, it, we have a room like this in Noesis where I said, do this. And he went for internship. And that was how it was designed. Rakshid is part of that. Anyway, so the point is that there's a whole bunch of literature on how do you model uh, a knowledge and how do you represent it. Uh, and uh, we, I, you know, I won't take going. I, I want you to be aware of it, and it's just not going to be enough time for you to learn and understand all, all about it. But I at least pay attention here and and argue. You're most welcome uh, to argue this. One of the most important driving thing for me today is this hierarchy that these are the abstractions. So in the morning meeting, we talked a lot about analogy, right? The abstraction is also a place where we can make huge impact. So I want you guys to design, show me a, um, uh, you know, let's develop a 
this advanced TDLR, uh, you, you know, or you know, TLDR, right? TDLR. <laughs> TDLR. Top down. Huh? Top down. Top down. That's so right. Let us describe, you know, <laughs> enhances that we have a pipeline where I can add each level of uh, where I basically I can handle different levels of abstraction. And we have two different notions of abstraction. One option of abstraction is the abstraction as in a new network layer, which is the statistical, layer, and other is the semantic uh, level of abstraction, which is what this uh, you know uh, um, the different types of knowledge that I've talked about is, right? So take either of them, preferably the latter, and uh, let us show. So in ki we only had two of those layers, two layers of abstraction, right? I want to do uh, the third one being um, uh, the domain model. And I then want to say we have a framework that does. This is also an idea that I want it in the uh, uh, keynote. So I, I hope you guys are going to put it up uh, very shortly. Dr. Shida, I have a question. So in your 15 years of uh, that uh, you article, you mentioned that uh, the AI, uh, AI semantic thing is not working very well as compared to the patent in Python. So, but you didn't mention like what was the reason behind it? Like, can you explain a little bit? Please? Yeah, the reason behind that was again that a uh, bunch of the, um, so let, let's see. Um, put in context where, when you are talking, when I'm talking about it, right? So if you look at the year of um, uh, 2000, uh, I founded the company in 1999, right? And before I founded the company based on the work I did on Video Anywhere. This was a project LG Log funded where we created a cable set of box in which we added Java-based program, uh, you know, program, which would index uh, uh, the local video uh, that, you know, I take my, my video camera and I put it in my, you know, digital form. I would index video on the web, which will be the video search, uh, and I would index uh, video uh, in the com uh, interactive TV programming. You have a menu, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a TV menu, I, TV, uh, and menu says on uh, the, on this channel, ABC from 6.30 to 7.30, this program, uh, that program has this actor, this name of the, you know, sitcom or whatever, and blah, 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 right? So I have all that data available, right? Mm -hmm. So I can index that, right? Yeah. So, and then I search and it'll tell you, oh, you have this local, you have um, a programming on, suppose Paris, I search Paris. So you, I'll, I'll say, oh yeah, you have your own video about your trip from Paris or here on the net, there are all these videos on Paris and YouTube. And here, uh, uh, there are all these program, Emily in Paris, uh, you know, that is also about Paris, uh, you know, uh, because I know, because again, there also there's a knowledge graph. And I know when you say Paris, Paris is a uh, city and location and, and at various in France. And so I would then be able to do semantic search. That is what we developed. And then I gave the uh, first site of uh, you know, re uh, refusal to uh, LG saying, do you want to buy this intellectual property? Um, uh, they, they did not, uh, they have a certain time to, so I said, I will take it and I founded the company. So I, I had built a demo. Uh, and, and the demo that I built was, you will go to uh, CNN. Yeah, I saw that picture called that video thing. Yeah, we will crawl CNN, we will crawl NBC, we will crawl a variety of websites. Mm -hmm. And I uh, will index all that. And we had the knowledge graph you have seen. Why do you think that it is not as comparable to the today AI thing? Like the AI no, even today, see, there is there are things. Um, there's hardly anyone that really understands the power of use of knowledge graph. You see, the, the whole concept of domain, context, relationships. Uh, who is who is exploring that? You even go, you see, uh, uh, in the last class, I showed you uh, the search of Madonna, and there was this uh, uh, rich uh, media uh, uh, page, right, that we had, which is even today a more sophisticated form of page than the Google's info box, the one that the box that you got, because there there were live, inter, you know, links that will link to the 
uh, to multiple sources of information. When Google came out with Infobex, it was simply a snapshot of information from Wikipedia. And today they have started adding the link to only a, a fixed set of things. We were able to create links dynamically. Right? Uh, okay. Yeah, um, so I had a question about the indexing project that you did. So if the keyword was Paris, was this search and retrieval based on the keyword or would it also somehow search um, what if there was a movie which was based out of based in Paris, but it did not hold the word Paris in its title? Would it still be able to uh, retrieve that movie? It would be. See, because we would uh, interpret that word uh, first, we will un try to understand the word um, uh, with regards to the knowledge graph. Mm, yeah, that and is the knowledge graph would have uh, a model, uh, it will have concept of a location. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'll give you one very concrete example. Uh, and in fact, there is a, a, a picture of that in my, look at my 2003 keynote or 2001 and 2003 keynotes uh, at um, uh, this conference, um, I forget now name. It, it, the interesting sad thing is that the 2001 conference was on 9-11. And I uh, gave the conference, uh, you know, my keynote. Mm -hmm. My ticket was on to second next day. Mm -hmm. uh, from Erfurt, uh, you know, Germany, uh, I, were, I took the train because I, I thought I can make that flight at 12.15. And I reached um, 15 minutes before the plane departure. I skipped the uh, ticketing counter. Uh, I, I was a uh, platinum, platinum member of uh, Delta. Those days, the, the, we did not have the checking. Mm -hmm. I went directly to the um, uh, 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 plane. Plane had stopped, closed the door. They opened for me. I was immediately upgraded to the first uh, business class. I, I sat there. We were on uh, just past the island, and the white things came out of the plane, dumped the fuel, fuel <laughs> and That's landed in um, uh, Dublin Airport. There were 30, 40 aircraft there like, on the tarmac. We were given shared room. In, so many people had landed that we had to change the room every day. <laughs> After three and a half days, I could come back. Uh, uh, you know, so after I land, we landed, they said that US Air Force airspace is closed. We didn't know anything. We used to the hotel and saw the anyway. So, but that is the keynote where I talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, what was that? What what was the thing? What was that? So uh, it's a dental uh, reference to Paris, not in yes, the title. Yes. Is it is it like a direct keyword search? No, it's not from the beginning. See, the sem it was semantic search. That's the whole patent about. It. Semantic web for search, browsing, personalization, advertisement. Recently, again, if you are following me on uh, LinkedIn, I talked about a thing about advertisement. You remember that? So what happens is uh, these days, um, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 far right people and uh, white uh, super, uh, nationalist people, super, uh, supremacist people uh, on Twitter now. They've grown up, uh, you know, they, they've gone up high after uh, after. Uh, uh, Elon Musk has, uh, you know, basically removed all the guards. So now what happens is that the company's uh, advertisement would come on a page or, or, or on the post uh, next to the post, and if uh, the, by by let's say racist post, right? That is bad for the brand, right? Yeah. So this is something that we talked about in year. When was it? When Mina, uh, I, I was, I got, I got a grant from um, Microsoft. Remember this morning we talk about uh, Microsoft making a billion dollar in OpenAI. Yeah. Microsoft invested fifteen billion dollars in Facebook. Right, and so we went to Microsoft and said we have this idea that Facebook is going to make money advertisement, and that uh, there's a problem of you know uh, branding that. Uh, you may have uh, uh, some um, a thing about uh, a box uh, or, 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 you know, at during funeral and your, you know, thing might show up where you are, your box is for travel. 
and that would be very bad for you, right? So there's a video I shared. I also shared video in the context that see how good a student presence. Mina was a very good uh, presenting, but that is the work that we did, where we understood the intent of advertisement and the context in which advertisement is done, and what the, and the brand value context, and then said these are inconsistent, so don't put it there. Two thousand and ten, a uh, nine. Uh, Dr. Sheet, I'm very curious. So you said that the indexing was done on the ba on the basis of um, on the videos that you had on, say, your camera, okay, or on the things that are on the TV itself, say Netflix or whatever. Um, but my question is, how were you able to understand that this particular video is about Paris? Because the title doesn't say so, it will probably have like our digits in its name. No, so 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 the video processing is not what we did. Okay. But um, uh, there'll be all the metadata, right? So 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 you have think about the, the mm -hmm. interactive TV. Somebody has a programming, right? You are seeing in your uh, you know menu all the you know you go to hotel and list all the channel you can see. Mm -hmm and uh, what is going playing now and what is playing one hour later half an hour later one hour later all that behind that itself is a lot of metadata already okay. so when we uh, uh, when we um, uh, uh, obtain uh, what is called as uh, uh, it's called digital it's called directory uh, interactive tv directory we have all that information okay. but when we go to when we go to the web page we crawl the web page and we look at the a video or an, or an image. We look at the caption and we look at the paragraph surrounding that. So we give the highest value to, uh, and then each video has uh, encoding, MPEG-4. Mm -hmm. And MPEG-4, and there's MPEG-7. And this standard have a schema. They have all these properties and attributes there. So the value location would be a uh, uh, you know attributed property and the value will be Paris. Right. So we know we, we we picked up that. If we don't have that, then we uh, pay attention to the caption. caption. If we don't have that, then we pay attention to the surrounding text. That is what you defined as a knowledge base. The knowledge base was the fact that we built uh, uh, you know knowledge graph for twenty five different domains. We built knowledge graph for business domain. We build knowledge graph for sports. Within the sports, we had baseball, basketball, football, within the football and cricket. And within the football, we had professional football and college football. So we had built all these, uh, you know, thing, and we built the tools so that a non-programmer can use this tool to write, um, a, 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 a define, a, write an agent that will uh, do semantic uh, processing of the web page. So web page has um, metadata embedded, which uh, web page is meta tags inside. Web page is, um, uh, you know, headers, H1, H2, H3. Web page has a variety of other things. And you write um, regular expression. So only thing that person need to know is regular expression. Pick up this and map it to uh, our schema. So we have schema, let's say, of a news, political news, where it says, um, the um, uh, news uh, uh, location of the news agency and location of the uh, news item. So the news from Serbia, which was, there was a country called Serbia, which now has changed, right? Uh, which include, uh, 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 you know, Herzegovina and uh, Croatia and all that's part of the greater Serbia. So we would, uh, you know, uh, look at, so, so there, if I come across, let's say the uh, capital of Serbia, I would write in my knowledge graph um, uh, the capital and country because I have the knowledge or geographical knowledge. Then you search in, on the web page itself, there is no mention of country. But you search by country, you'll find it because you have enhanced. This is semantic enhancement of the uh, you know thing. So these are, you know, so we developed the, we use um, published things like today we would use geonames, we use something there. We uh, had the entire, uh, uh, you know, history of um, music. So all the labels, all the uh, uh, CDs or records that were published, and all the metadata, the artists, the track, everything was there. 
So there was a website called All Music. Uh, and uh, there was also a website which was a precursor to IMDb. So if I wanted movie information, I have all of this IMDb, right? <laughs> so I, ha I would have that uh, knowledge, whole knowledge. Then I would have the knowledge uh, graph. Uh, so that is, I call that ontology. And then I will have knowledge graph of all the things we have crawled, like CNN web page and all that, and the metadata we created, if necessary, using semantic enhancement, okay. uh, using the ontological uh, you know, uh, knowledge. And then it becomes searchable, right? So, it is on knowledge base. Yeah, that all the thing was in knowledge base, yeah. That's the process. Uh, there are missing information in the, in the C directory. I'm sorry? What if there are missing information in the directory? Missing important information that makes a significant contribution for the final decision. So, so here's the thing, right? Um, what is our competition? Our competition is simply indexing the text. That's all they were doing. Only thing that it was indexed in text. They could not even tell you that um, uh, what is the name of uh, what is the Serbia's uh, uh, capital. I mean, so so suppose you come across the uh, you know uh, thing Athens. They would they, they would index Athens, but they would have no capability of asking is it Athens Georgia, Athens Greece, Athens um, uh, uh, Ohio, and all kind of things. There are 13 Athens in the United States, plus there is Athens, Greece. Right? They don't know any of those things. We knew. So we will ask the question what it is. There is a slide I have uh, given in my keynotes, earlier keynotes, that shows you how do we uh, disambiguate. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, which Athens it is. How do we do that? Right? Just the same way I explained that we had this strategy that we will first look at embedded metadata in the object followed by caption followed by surrounding text right that's a strategy that is fast only thing others can could do in those days is uh, uh, index the uh, text they did not uh, they did not do structural exploitation of the web page yeah so the, in this slide uh, this is where we create all the knowledge this is where we uh, get uh, you know metadata for all the uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, things we crawl, and then we put in the knowledge base, and then we search here and test the search. Deepa, why don't we join the Zoom and share it? Mm. So, how is it different from searching on the metadata and then searching on the text itself? Mm? How is it different from searching key search on the metadata in the text itself? Uh, sorry, what we what are we calling the metadata? First, understand. Yeah. You see, we had the whole knowledge of geography let's say mm. we had the knowledge of journalism we had the knowledge of business right so these were all ontologies that were created mm. and then we are taking a content and mapping it so let uh, uh will show you the slide and i'll explain you from this slide so uh, uh so you are now searching like a database, not the index. There is, of course, need for index for going to down to the object. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Link is in the Google Doc of the <coughs> Google Doc. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Before Deepa shares, I just have a quick question, Doctor, <coughs> yeah. or probably a small comment that uh, like how we had knowledge bases previously and the currently how we are taking in <coughs> i think uh, it's always uh, before we did not have video processing or image processing <coughs> at uh, scale. That, at scale but now as we have it i think now, uh, instead of just having a natural language based knowledge uh, knowledge graph such as like just based on text it's always better to have multimodal knowledge uh, graph. Yeah, the, the, with the multimodal knowledge graph, <coughs> we can. <coughs> you see, we need three things. I showed you, right? The metadata for uh, video or image and the caption, all that. But we did not process the digital processing of image or video itself. Yes. 
that thing has substantially progressed now. And yet nobody is doing significant thing about it because it's still extremely expensive compared to it at scale. <clears throat> You're doing one video, 10 video, no problem. But you're talking about all the videos in the web. Ali was built uh, for a web search. I had a data center. Large computers sitting there in those days. I had 13 major servers sitting in my data center. Right? And uh, the, there is a uh, two order of magnitude or more difference between text and uh, digital media. <laughs> Who is going to pay for all the cost? Yes. And even if, so, but you can still do some high value uh, image processing, but even then, today's best image processing is still nowhere close to how a human understands an image. But at that time when uh, these papers were being published, so Tali, like at the time of Tali also, they were all like, but according to my understanding, they were just working on uh, the page scrapers and all. They were just not looking at the uh, like semantic information so that they can extract the right keywords from them. Two, two, at, at two levels. The first level is that we would uh, look at the structure of the page. For example, suppose there's a news a news page on CNN, right? Or 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 any New York Times. There'll be typically an image, and there'll be a um, uh, the 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 journalist name. There'll be two three journalists. There'll be location from which it is reporting, and there'll be uh, uh, time, right? The date and time, or at least date. And then there'll be title, and there'll there'll be you know multiple paragraph, and some more images. We understood that structure. We understood that when the information appears here, that is the name of a journalist. When information appears here, this is the... Which year? Huh? Which year? Uh, 2000. We had three paying customers of this. Three paying customers. This, was, this uh, keynote was 2002, but Tali was in 2000. Yeah, I found it in 1999, based on video anywhere technology, where that's some basic thing. But it was all. Okay, so this is this is uh, more interesting because Sega kind of conferences, which are those you know, community did not form that form at that time. Yeah. So so see what is happening here is that um, the ontology as a model of business, as a model of, uh, and if you look at the the 10, 15 year thing, there is a, actually a knowledge graph, uh, you know, shown. What are the mod, you know, areas? It it could be it's a score. You see the score as I said, the different scores professional, amateur, all those roles there, right? This was kept up to date. So let me give you one interesting example. The example is that in ontology, in the business, there is a stock index. There are three major stock index. As, uh, so NASDAQ is one stock index. So NASDAQ, uh, you, you know, uh, has uh, companies listed and delisted on NASDAQ every day. So we would have a knowledge extractor that goes to NASDAQ's website every day and picks up all the uh, uh, currently listed companies there. You can notice that companies that have been delisted and added. And goes ahead and changes the database here for the NASDAQ. So I have uploaded knowledge on the NASDAQ, which companies are uh, traded or not traded in NASDAQ. I have here a model of, uh, you know, uh, not, not knowledge uh, uh, ontology for. Uh, and uh, movies, uh, entertainment, and that I have movies, I have plays, whatever. For movies, I will go to IMDb. And again, do the scanning. So new movie has released, it shows up there, I have knowledge of new movie. I will do the same thing with the music. Then suppose I have one for sports, and I need to have one for sports. So I, so let's say sport. Now in the sport, what happens is that uh, the, uh, I have I have model here for the sport team and the roster, all the members of the sport team. Well, the uh, the sport uh, uh, roster does not change every day, right?
the the sport uh, 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 so it changes typically uh, rule of thumb is it changes typically uh, once or uh, twice a season so in the beginning so roster and there is a change in roster somewhere midday so there is no way, need for us to run this extractor every day we run it once a year or twice a year or something like that so the recency of information remember we talked about recency in also our work recency is uh, contextual some information changes uh, hourly daily other information changes monthly annually whatever so these were programmed to run at different times there was whole infrastructure to program when to run etc all that kept this thing up to date right tens of extractor extractor running or hundreds of extractors just program and running we had built a toolkit to create this knowledge extractor without programming other than regular expression that kind of level of programming so i actually had hired a, a music major who would run you know write this knowledge extractor and modify plus the page web pages can change the formatting can change then you have to re uh, you know organize that okay change that now here so so here you have different content so you have website so the page go, so the content page is isn't like that created without programming but for a web page it will understand the structure of website web pages are typically on the major websites are created using templates they are not just you know written like that. they have you know software that they use content development software website development software so they have a structure that structure is understood and we understand what is the title what is the author name what is the date all the stuff plus we will uh, do the enhancement so when you find um, sabanisa there is actually an example in an keynote where you define that how you are scrapping it. Right, right. Let me go go up there. Uh, I want to show you one uh, you know, interesting thing. So, so look at this here, <laughs> this one here. So what happens is that here is a web page that we come across. There is some structure, right? So title, poster, you see, Atlanta location here, right? There is this, there is a caption, all that. What we do first is to run a classifier to say what is this page about. And you can see here classes. And this one says it is baseball. Then what we do from the ontology, we will use baseball ontology. So suppose there's a person the name. Classification will go down if you have a huge number of classes, right? Huh? This classification acquisition will go down if you have a huge number of classes. No, why would? I mean, see, if you have, think about web scale, if you have 1,000 or 2,000 classes, then actually it will go down. On a single page, it is running. No, 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 but you would design classifier, not even what you say, you would design for web scale, right? There, there, there are a lot of things that come, you know, number of training set, uh, unique thing. See, again, our classifiers would use a domain knowledge. Oh. Fundamentally changes the whole equation. Why? You remember that graph I have shown you? Uh, where uh, where there was a pink line for knowledge graph based classifier mm. and uh, and HMM and Bayesian classifiers, you remember that? No. That is uh, the box that was in the previous picture. There, I'll show you again. So these were knowledge graph enhanced classifiers and uh, classification. Uh, you know, so they did much better than the uh, uh, run of the mill. Uh, you know, statistical classifiers, machine learning classifiers. Once you've done that, suppose there's a there's a, a, a name here of um uh, uh let's see uh uh nd ashby here assume that there are three nd ashby in the world now this one will use only baseball knowledge base and say this is nd ashby of that and you see this is hypertext thing this is not in the text this is what we added we understood nd ashby is a person we found that in the knowledge base so we have hypertext uh, hyperlinked it to ndxp the one ndxp that we think this person is this is uplifting 
this is uh, you know more, you know uh, uh, entity linking entity linking right in sujan's work you call uh, entity linking so you know which sp you are talking about now right and in understanding the, uh, here you have to understand the name of the uh, you know features you have to understand the, you know name of the basically basement all those things you have to, you have to understand where you are playing it you want to understand whom you are playing against those are the things you want to understand. These are contextually relevant. That's what human would be interested in, right? A human searching for baseball would have the model of, uh, you know, pitcher, baseman, uh, you know, baseman, uh, 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 game, where is it being played? Uh, who is the opposing team? Who is this team? This kind of things you would have model, right? Which search engine have that model? We had it. That's our ontology for baseball. We know we did index, you know, uh, classification to say this is that. So we see you have discovered entity for baseball. We found, and these are the roles that they play. You know, this is from our knowledge base that uh, you know uh, for for what is already. So it's only about what is in this page, and then locations, and this is location related to the location uh, participating in baseball sports. Not some arbitrary location. So it's just additional semantics. For example, when I say Atlanta and baseball, I know the baseball stadium in Atlanta, not something else. A human would have that knowledge or would you know be looking for that? This system. So that's why there was a paper that that, that a new article. If I, I don't know if you read, search engine that made a uh, search engine that reads human mind. That was an article published. That was my interview when I explained this to a journalist. That was published in uh, year 2000, uh, March. Thing you explained in the 15 years of that. Yeah, yeah, that is a yeah. <laughs> so it looks like among you guys, only one person seemed to have read that thing. Even though I so much stressed that please read this, please read this. Did you read it? 15 years? Yes, but don't. Let's remember it. Did you read it? Yeah, same. I, I did go through it, all of it. Did you? Did you? Yeah. But then why? why <laughs> and if you followed even one third of the links in there, you would have gotten all that. This is what is expected of you guys. Now, the, why is this important? Because even the lessons you are seeing here about where the knowledge gets applied, you guys could exploit that in the modern context. Right? The fact that today's language models are built using the same basic principle as a normal search engine. It's all about words. Right? There's nothing more. We want to build something where we are using the base for knowledge. And when I talk about baseball knowledge and I have a location, I have baseball, uh, you know, stadium location. When I talk about cricket and I have location, I have the pitch, look, you know, where the cricket play service. Different things. Sorry, Dr. Shet, coming back to the point, uh, you said language models are built with words. Oh, yeah. Well, at the, at the end of it, what does it do? It no, simply no. has patterns. No. No, so, so tell me, okay, let's tell me. No, okay, okay. yeah. Well, it doesn't do anything. It starts with that, and that adds layers to it that we interpret as something else. Okay, so I have, I mean, go ahead with the question. I have. No, that was actually my question. Okay. As in, so I have an extension. No, I, I understand. I also, you know, know some of this work, you know, your work and somebody else's work at that time. So, uh, we have new ten minutes. So it's not a question, it's a discussion. Okay. And you can, you know, maybe today or, you know, in the following class, you can try to address those questions. I have those questions in my mind. I am not very clear. Okay. So I believe there are three kind of broader aspect issues or challenge in the knowledge graph. Number one, how to represent knowledge. Okay. Now you can represent knowledge in a way. I can represent some way. Parallel can represent some way. Okay. There is no global standard. Okay. Now I can train, uh, you know, framework from psychology. Cognitive science, sociology, whatever, you know, a practical view. So then I can say, okay, so this is my kind of representation style. 
So now we can argue and people argued over this for a long time. Second problem is, okay, if we finalize, this is my representation structure, how to create that representation, whether I'll be doing manual community effort, or I'll semi-automatic, I'll create some data, I'll do NLP methods, I'll you know, automatically create and so on. Now, this too is not major issues in my So I am more stuck with the last which I, I so first of all, those two issues are solved. I showed you. Yeah, yeah. You should not even have a question. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you are making that. You just go and do it. Hmm. I use IMDb schema. Why do I have to invent any more schema? In, in you know, in, in movie, IMDb has, you know, uh, is well accepted. Everybody understands that I have it. That, there's nothing to argue about it. You can make academic arguments, but the world has already moved on. And I showed you how do you do, uh, you know, uh, extract them and bring it into your, your stuff and keep it up to date. So both those issues are totally addressed. Done. I don't have to yeah, answer that. Okay. The third problem is the relationship. Okay. So let me just, you know, talk about my experience about this thing. So I, I was talking about this identity project. And so uh, uh, every, you know, year we used to have workshop and we used to have expert from, you know, uh, like, you know, Arvind Joshi, who is a very well known NLP guy, and uh, Pelvam and Pandu <coughs> uh, very well known in the NLP community as well. So, Arvind Joshi is more NLP guy, linguistic, uh, you know, for interviewing things. And Martha Parman and Pelvam was more of, you know, this uh, knowledge or, you know, this mental lexicon kind of thing. So, then the argument was all the way that the, you know, relationship you are building is, you know, look fascinating, very interesting looking. But we don't know how to use it. Linguistic structure knowledge, like you know, word here and etc., hyperneme, antonym, and etc., we know how to use it. We can design rules and so on. Now, all these 50,000 relation concept made, I mean, I don't know how to algorithmically use it. I only use the knowledge structure, I only use the graph. But this relationship only satisfies, you know, my curiosity. Okay, so well structured, but I don't know how to use the algorithm. So that's where I mean I'm a little bit of lost. So, so I have one small comment adding to what Dr. Das just said. I think this is one of the major uh, like overall challenge that you see in most of the neurosymbolic AI papers, be it with planning, be it with uh, inductive logic programming or anything. How what is the best way of modeling it that can actually work with uh, multiple domains or that can be generalized overall. So I see it's a you know, kind of persistent struggle for the last 30 years. You know, we are still you know, talking about today, neural network, you know, neural symbolic and etc. the name change. But we still don't know how to use those structure. I mean, we are talking about, we are making wonderful structure. It looks very, you know, fantastic to us. I don't know what you mean. Uh, and I was to make this earlier. Um, at least in psychology, mm. explicit symbolic representations of knowledge mm -hmm. have been central to at least the two major paradigms for modeling higher order cognition. So we use that for problem solving, for reasoning, for inference, for planning. Um, all of those higher order functions draw on structured knowledge bases in one way or another. So I'm just kind of surprised oh, you say, how uh, do you use it? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Well, I'm, 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 just, I'm not going to there. My question, question is, when are computation is used in this? Okay. After computation, you do process. Okay. Yeah. So, computational yes. Problem. Okay, yes. So there are, even in computational models for cognition, there are huge search problems mm -hmm. and controlling serial processing. Those are the things that still kind of stump us. And what we usually do to manage that is have an explicit symbolic goal structure that guides the march through either the explicit partner representation or a rule-based representation. Uh, Dr. Shalit, just one thing on that. So when we are specifying to one single goal structure, then we are again coming back to the initial issue with just having symbolic A that it's not scalable. Yes. So we are like, even though we are able to computationally include it, no, but again, we are sorry, please go ahead. Let me, let me add not theoretical discussion. I'm not talking about empirical. Just go to Google, do search for concept in paper, 10,000 citations for all together, sure. last 15 years, and you know, kind of read those papers. Majority of the paper argue this is the problem. 
we really don't know how we do strictly thumb relationship competition. Okay, because of efficiency and search issues. Yeah, many issues. Now, if we can't use them the computationally, then what is the use of that? Well, uh, I mean, all those total agreement. Yeah. So, so, so I look to you guys to solve the competition. We may not have a solution today. I agree. You know, so that, that the professor said, we were saying that that we will later come back right, from the previous figure. We may not have a solution to this. We might have a solution in 10 years. And that's why we've been saying that's fine. So, but how we should see that today that you know how we can you know take it forward. So what's what should be our you know you know way forward? So that's the question. Um so I I have uh, an answer to that, but I I we don't have time yet. <laughs> uh, you know, let's just complete this, go back here, yeah, one or two things. Yeah, so so see, uh, go in the next one. This is you, you, okay. So you see, uh, you, uh, there are different uh, types of uh, objects or sources. They handle differently, uh, you know, in the exploit uh, syntax structure and semantics. Semantics aided by this structure is in how you write content, uh, etc. This is with the automatic classification. I showed you that, and this is the uh, uh, you know this is where. Uh, this classification committee that uh, 2002 paper where we had knowledge extractor and other in you know, HMM and other things that is this one here. And using the ontology, you do the enhancement, like I showed you that you say that Paris is in France. So if you search by France, you'll get you know Paris content also, even though there's no mention of France in the thing. Similarly, on a page on a baseball, uh, a, 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 or uh, you know, there'll be name of a player. It does not say uh, it, it, what, the, what the theme is, but because my knowledge base uh, ontology helps me enhance, uh, you know, no tells you that this player is in this team. If you search for, uh, um, uh, of, you know, results for the team, you will get one. Even the base does not have team. Now a normal search engine won't do that, right? Because it doesn't have that knowledge. So this is a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, substantial uh, progress. Even today. If the uh, system does it, it is done through association. Uh, so it is done at a at a at a data level, that it knows that uh, uh, you know this particular player often comes in the context of uh, this team, and hence it may be the search engine may be able to give you something. It is guessing. It is probabilistic. Here, it is definitive knowledge based on which we are doing it. So it's a big difference there. Okay, go down. Google search engine works like on a probabilistic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now here there are different kinds of things. We were very ahead to uh, get intellect, uh, uh, interactive TV content into our uh, stuff, uh, and just to give you an idea. And we were the first search engine in the world to search for images and video uh, because we had that strategy of image metadata, video metadata, caption. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody else did that in the entire world. Go ahead. So you, you, you saw this program go down. So here, uh, content is coming. Uh, this is context, which is news aggregator. So 95 different sources of news, uh, like African news agency or uh, Indian uh, a, you know, uh, news agency or whatever. If, uh, uh, they all would have used a, a particular uh, news metadata standard, and they were exploited. And here, we will do content enhancement. So we would add, so here we do value added, like you will know private companies, type of company, industry affiliation, sector, exchange, company, executive, computer. This will be part of our knowledge base or, or ontology. So when there is uh, uh, some syntax here, corresponding semantic information and enhancement could be added. Just like when I have Paris, I know it is in France. Similar general idea is the enhancement that is being done. This again, because you have the knowledge. This is when human results see such results, human uses that knowledge. And so uh, human understands more than what such is understands. And that's why the results look better than what they really are. Huh? So this you have seen before, I've shown you that uh, this is the only you know, thing where you can do this six thing. No, it is an uh, entity, but you also know it's a financial index. And you know the index of this five had specific five uh, you know, uh, stocks that those are the that is the power of it is because you can associate relationship that these two competes. Next, 
So here, you see, uh, this is the web page, and this is all the metadata that were extracted. And among the interesting thing it does is that it says, uh, uh, President Walslav uh, 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 Kosturis. Uh, so uh, the system here uh, uh, understands that this guy is a president of this country and many other kind of things. And so, um, and you can see here, uh, it, it mentions Belgrade, uh, uh, Yugoslav. It mentions uh, Belgrade, but does not mention this whole thing. Belgrade is in Yugoslavia, is in Europe, right? So, and and the, here, uh, it, uh, you know, even if it says Costa Rica, the whole name is put here. It says Milosevic. Mm -hmm. It may not say uh, Slobodan Milosevic. We extended that so we can, uh, you know, uh, know exactly who the person is and all that. So. A lot of extensions, the semantic extensions being done here. Go next. So you see here, uh, different parts are picked up here. You see San Jose, California, syntax metadata business, semantic metadata, Cisco, Cisco system is a company, and that kind of stuff. Go next. So here, uh, you know, it shows you how all the metadata is created. Cisco system, it is part of the industry, tracker. Uh, you know, channel partners, executives, all this is available. So when we have contained it is further extension and you know, understand a lot more about it. Next. So look at this, this is, uh, this was a brilliant thing. So this is a, a interface for a stock, uh, uh, you know, advisor, uh, financial advisor. But you see here, there's a company uh, news. That is easy, anybody can do that. And from different sources. Uh, and analysis news, but here is industry and competition news. How would you know for this company, Motorola, which you know which is acquired since then, so it, it's no longer an independent company. But how do you know who are Motorola's um, competitors? A number of questions you won't know. It. Here, the knowledge base tells you who are the competitors. So now you can show the news of competitor right there, right? Very powerful. Yeah. Things about Motorola on multiple different websites, taking you directly to the SAC information of Motorola, taking you directly to the, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, audit or cash flow of Motorola on third-party website. And here is a real-time tracker for Motorola coming from third-party website. Look at, this, look at the same. And this is possible because there is a semantic integration happening on the fly. You can see a variety of things it does. Focus on content service. Uh, okay, go next. So, you know, this is a snapshot of knowledge graph of those days, year 2000. This is 2000 years, right? Next. So, here is a very powerful concept. We understand that Islamic Jihad group, we understand Alman al Zawari, we understand, uh, you know, Ibrahim al Nazar, all these people, entities we understand, and their relationship. And Islamic uh, group, uh, Jihad group, he, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, they is the same as Al Jihad or related to Al Jihad. From this web page, we can go to other web page with the chasing of the relationship. Different types of, so levels of this relationship may be different. It's not just one type relationship type. In the knowledge graph, uh, ontology, there are different relationship types. But the objects are related through a relational type, you can exploit that. This thing was exploited in a different way in the Schooner project, which I've talked to you about, right? And so you do blended semantic querying and browsing, and you can do, you know, you're doing browsing, yet, you know, also querying, go on, next. So what is happening? For this page, there is uh, all this metadata for all these different content, about Bin Laden. So from this page, which says Bin Laden, metadata, all the about Bin Laden. Uh, here is the, um, you know, this is uh, same as the, uh, you know, info box equivalent. And from that, you can uh, get me to query, and then you can, uh, you know, uh, change the topic to whatever you want using the any one of the different properties. Now you guys have a course, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so go. Yeah, it's long. 